Welcome back everyone to the Villarreal series for the start of season three, our third season here as manager at the club. We have our first game of the La Liga season today, but obviously the thing that most of you are probably interested in, the transfers, what we've done with the team, who we've sold, who we've bought in. Don't worry, I won't keep you waiting any longer. Let's run the intro and get right into it. Hello everyone, Jake here and welcome back to the Villarreal series. We have got a lot to catch up on today. Obviously the match and the transfers, but also how we finished last season, how we shaped the squad for the future, some tactic things as well that we're going to talk about, plenty to get into. So with that being said, let's get right into it. But don't forget, if you do enjoy, smashing the like button would really, really help in pushing these videos out to as many people as possible. YouTube's a tough world out there. Any support with like buttons will be greatly appreciated. And whilst you're at it, as we make that push for for 10k if you are watching at this point and you haven't subscribed i mean we're 10 plus episodes in now hopefully you're enjoying it enough if you're spending all the time watching the video so if you could subscribe that would be great but let's get right into it shall we and we should probably start off in chronological order with where we finished last season so i can't remember exactly but i think it was the 2-2 draw where we didn't know that it won as the league at the point but it had won as the league against cadiz I think that's the last time you saw us. I've got to say for that whole episode where we were playing Cadiz, I really had to stop myself saying Cadiz nuts and it's been so long since the episode, but I still wanted to say it. So I've got it out there. I'll never say it again, but I just had to get that out of my system. Um, but then we had already won the league. So we started trying to take it I suppose not easy, I would say, but we started using some players in games that we might not usually use. We beat Osasuna 2-1 with Kenneth Wynn scoring from the spot and Dan Juma scoring late on. We then beat Getafe with this guy scoring, who you might not recognise yet, Caden McLaughlin. And we were also using our young goalkeeper at the academy, who looks absolutely brilliant in these games. We followed up by drawing 1-1 with Celta Vigo, with Caden McLaughlin getting our only goal there. And then against Bilbao, we won 2-0. And then we started this season. I've already played one match, actually up to this point. You can see it here. It was a 2-0 win against Vallecano. I just had some extra business that I wanted to do in the meantime to get our team sorted. And again, you will see Caden McLaughlin on the score sheet. Our friendlies didn't actually go too well. I have no idea why the assistant only booked us in for two friendlies, but he did. Um, and we might struggle at the start of the season because of fitness. But you know what? We'll work with it. There's still time left in the transfer window, but we have made some movement. But um, I guess he's the star of the show right now. We should probably talk about him. Caden McLaughlin. He was a player in the development centre that the game was saying to give an opportunity to. And you know in Football Manager, where it shows you at the end of each season, the top 50 wonder kids in the world. He was hovering like 48, 49 when I last checked. And I thought, you know what? For these last few games of the season, I'll give him a game. And he played twice and scored twice. And then in the match at the start of the season, he didn't start, but I bought him on off of the bench and he went and got us a goal. So he's been very impressive. He'll be in and around the squad this season. He's definitely earned it so far. Three appearances, three goals, good with both feet, good on either wing, a very useful player to have. An 18-year-old Irishman who came through the ranks at Villarreal. I don't know how. Apparently he started at Malaga. No idea what's happened there, but he is now part of the side. But speaking of making players part of the side, the transfer window. We've done some business, some of which is very good, some of which was taken out of our hands. But I think overall, the squad's in a nice position. Don't shout at me for one of the transfers you're about to see, because I feel like a lot of people just... Yeah, I might have been clouded by a bit of bias here. Let's just say that in advance. I won't show just yet. Um, but just to bring you up to date with where we were after you last saw us, I needed some extra centre-backs bringing in to the side. And I did that by bringing in Oscar Mingueza on a free. I think I spoke about these two before. But playing free at the back, basically we needed some extra centre-backs. Mingueza was a good player on a free who isn't going to get upset if he only plays five or six times a season. So I thought that wasn't a bad deal. The same with Mats Hummels. He comes in as an option, but more as a mental mentor with that model citizen personality. Good determination. A big name centre back who might not have it in the physical department anymore, but in that ball playing defender role where we ask him to sit back a bit more, Mats Hummels could be a good option, but we'll see. If it doesn't work out, he's only here for a season or so, so it doesn't matter too much. Maybe the best signing of the summer and what has set our club up for the future for sure. He might not feature this season too much, but Jorge Galen, George Galen, Jorge Hal. Galen, we're just going to call him Galen, a under-21 Spanish international with five appearances and three goals who he bought in for only a couple million pounds, who's six foot tall, physically very good, mentally very good, and technically really good as well. I mean, if he gets a bit quicker, he could be very dangerous up front for us. Valued at around 45 million pounds, we got him for 1.1 million off of Sociedad. It was a compensation fee. He's been there for a couple of years as one of the better players 
in the you know youth divisions and I kept an eye on him, saw he was available, we went for him. And I think that is a big sign in for our side. But we did make some sales. The first one, and I say sales, a few of them were loans, but we let Fernino go on loan this season. He has gone out on loan to Granada in the second division. I'm not sure it's going to quite work out for Fernino here at the club. I know he's a player with a lot of potential in FM, but just in this save, it hasn't quite worked out. We'll see what happens with him. If he has a great season, awesome, we can reevaluate it. But for now, we're just going to loan him out and forget about him. Coquelin didn't play too much last year and we have let him go. He bought in £16.5 million, which was not bad for a player who only played four 14 times last season. He was riddled with injury. He wasn't playing all that much. And I figured it was a good idea to let him go with the emergence of Kenneth Wynn in the midfield. Xavi Simons has gone out on loan to Las Palmas for the season. He is now in the first division on loan. We'll see how he gets on with hopefully a lot of game time for Las Palmas. I would have thought he's one of their better players. If he plays a lot this season, we might see him develop into that squad player that I think he could be for us one day down the line. Another good young player that we have loaned out with a lot of potential is this man, Hassim Hassan, who is a Frenchman, 21 years old, with some great attributes, who again, I think will be a big part of the future of this club. He could probably play on either side and he's playing for one of the better teams in Turkey, at least one of the most notable teams in Turkey. One goal so far, one assist. His average match rate, it might not look great, but he did contribute in that match. We had Pierre Kalulu in on loan last season and at first it did not look like we were going to be able to make that loan permanent, but I did it. We spent a little bit of money on him, £14.5 million, but I think it's a perfect signing for us. He was great last year at centre-back. He can operate in wing-back if he needs to, and if we had to, we could force him on to the other side. I think he's a great player, versatile, and exactly what we need in this three-at-the-back system. But then it gets to the transfer that you're probably going to think, what the hell have I done here? Andre Onana has left the club. Now, that wouldn't be too bad if I bought in a really, really amazing replacement but let me just lay down a few things. Onana wanted to leave. I had no chance of keeping him. He was desperate to have a new deal. Bear in mind, he was on like 60, 70,000 pounds a week. And I went to offer it him because I thought, you know what? He's our best goalkeeper. He'll be here for years to come. And he was amazing for us last year. And he decides he wants 250 grand a week. I tried to negotiate this down as much as I could, somewhere below the 150 range because I did not want to mess up any sort of structure that we've got in the wages this year. But he said no, he didn't want it. We fell out and then he said, you know what, I'll give you one more chance. And I made the promise that I'll offer him a contract. I considered it at this point and I thought, you know what, if we really need to, I'll offer him 175 grand a week. And he started negotiations at 300k and it just did not work out. All of a sudden, he thinks I've broken a promise by not offering him a contract, even though I did. And he just gave me stupid demands and he kicked up a fuss. He asked to leave. It was bringing the squad morale down. So we let him go. 60 million pounds to Juventus. I mean, to be fair, he's played about 50 times for us in the league for 5 million pounds. We got him, of course, on a free, but paid for him to join halfway through the season. And he's left us for 60 million. It's near enough 55 million pounds profit good business on our end. And we replaced him. I say we replaced him. We had a few options on the market. Now, with the very good young goalkeeper coming through, who is called Ibrahim, who you might have seen when I showed him towards the start of the video, uh, where is he here? I feel like I didn't want a goalkeeper who was going to be around for 10 years because I wanted the chance for Ibrahim to come through. And I narrowed down my signings to the Turkish goalkeeper called Altai Bayandir or something like that. He looked good, but I decided I didn't want to make that deal permanent because I had two other ideas in mind. So I didn't go for him. So I narrowed down my choices to two people. It was either this guy for Bilbao, Unai Simon, who, to be honest, has kicked up a fuss since we tried to buy him. And maybe we'll still get if I'm not too keen on the goalkeeper that I did buy after the first few games that he plays. But Simon was going to cost us around 40 million at the time. And I just had another option in my mind who was a lot cheaper. And I kind of just want the redemption story. You might have seen him pop up a few times already as we've gone through showing everyone off. But if we do go to transfers, go to history. We signed Kepa. We signed Kepa Ariza Balaga from Chelsea. I think he's got it in him still, guys. I know he might not look amazing and there is a bit of a Chelsea bias here. I am wearing a Chelsea shirt, but he's a good goalkeeper in FM. Whatever you think of him in real life, he's got good attributes. He's been playing terribly for Chelsea in this simulation um, since we started the save. But our first game, he got a 7.3 average match rating. He played fine for 15 million. It's not a bad deal for a player who used to be a Spanish international. And I'm hoping we can get the best out of him again. And who knows, maybe he'll go on to be Spain's number one. He only wanted to be a backup goalkeeper according to his contract. So he won't get too annoyed over time if we start to phase Ibrahim in. He's got everything that I'd want in a goalkeeper. I'm not really judging his star rating too much because attribute wise, he's got what I want. It's just a six foot one uh, height that might do him in. 
as it has done in real life, he does concede a lot of long shots, but I don't know if that's going to be the case in Football Manager. I'll soon see. Like I say, I've got other options in mind. And because of a transfer business we've done, we've still got a lot of money in the budget, £42 million. And financially, the club is in a very good place with near enough £100 million in the bank balance. We've been given a lot of players new contracts who have been asking for them, um, which I'm hoping will ease any tensions in the squad and get everyone happy and all of our key players tied down for long-term futures. And overall, things are going very well at the club. We've got state-of-the-art training facilities, state-of-the-art youth facilities. We've now bought our stadium, which is great, and we can expand it now. We've got some top players at the club. We've got some older heads to mentor. We've got a great young crop of players coming through. Um, on top of that, just as a side note, I've been paying since the start of this save. I think I've mentioned it, but for Danny Parejo's coaching courses, he is now like a continental B. He's only got one more license or so to get. Um, but despite that, his staff attributes have came through this season and with all of the courses we put him on, he's came through looking like this. I don't know. I don't know if he's ever going to develop. I don't really know how coaches work. I'm assuming the more badges they have, the more potential they have to potentially grow. I don't really know. Do let me know if you know how coaches work in the comments. But I'm hoping one day Parejo could be a half decent coach. I've invested enough time and effort into this man. But you know, it is what it is. I've had a few people recently ask me about the tactic and what we're actually playing in this system. Obviously, I covered it at the start of the save. We've made a few changes since then, so I'll just quickly run through what we are doing. We have a wide centre-back on the right that's looking to do the following, and a left centre-back who is looking to do what you can see here, and Goncalo Ignacio in the middle. He's our ball-playing defender with the following additional instructions. I'm not usually one for additional instructions, but I wanted to make it the same way that Chelsea kind of played in real life as a Chelsea fan. I wanted to replicate that. Hasn't quite worked, but we're definitely playing some very good football. Um, there you go. You can see the left wing back and the right wing back, the box to box midfielder, the central midfielder on attack, an inside forward, an inverted winger, and a complete forward on the attack duty, playing a tiki taka style. I actually think I started this with a blank slate, but you can see everything that we're doing here. We're playing narrow, really low tempo, really short passing directness, working the ball into box, playing it out of defense. We're all about possession. I mean, to be honest, I'm not someone who really focuses on tactics and I didn't know our tempo was so low. That might explain a few things, but there you go. Um, we counter press, we distribute quickly and blah, 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 blah. I don't know everything about tactics. This is just what I've done. And even though it failed at first, I think we've now got the players and the understanding of the tactic because that's a massive thing, of course. We want to get familiar with the tactic. And over time, that's happened. You can see the green links between the players as they're developing some good chemistry. And it's working great now. So I have no complaints at all. We're going to forward ahead to the game in a second, but I just want to show roughly what our squad depth looks like. So we've got Kepper in goal, Ibrahim as his backup, who hasn't developed enough yet, but he's appearing on this squad depth screen. Pau Torres and Zagadou as our left centre-back options with Ignacio, Hummels, Francis Kalulu and Mengueza as our other defensive options. We've got Rosas, Lamptey and Kalulu as right wing-backs potentially, Pedraza and Grimaldo on the left. Through the middle, we've got Parejo and Fernandez with Kessie and Kenneth Wynn, Danjuma, Despedov, Pino, Biena, Galen, Giori, and Moreno fill up our attacking roles. And I keep saying one more thing, but I do want to point out, since we have joined Villarreal, we've actually made a profit in terms of transfers every season. This season, so far, making a profit. Last season, making a profit. Bigger sales than we had expenditure, expenditure, expenditure. And then this season, the same again. We made a lot of money from sales. We didn't spend as much. You can see it here in the little graph. We are running this club very well. Considering how far we've came whilst we've been technically making money on our players, I think it's super impressive. I'm feeling like this season could be the year of Jeremy Pino. And whilst I have been forced him out onto a wing where he might not be comfortable recently, I think this might be the year where we play him on that left-hand side more often. So we are in the market for a few extra players, but we'll see how that all goes this season. Okay, we're getting closer to game day. It's severe that we're going to be playing today, but do let me know in the comments below where you think we should improve our team. I mean, I've got a recruitment meeting here. I'd actually be interested to see what they think we should improve on. And it's only one position, the central midfielder, um, and that's to do with interesting Kessie and Danny Parejo moving on. But I'm very happy actually um, with what we're doing in these positions. So I'm not too bothered right now. Um, you know what? Yeah, I, I'm perfectly happy with what we're doing in those areas because we're bringing through Kenneth Wynn. We've got some other good young prospects and I really do think that the players that we've got there, Parejo, Kessie, they're going nowhere and they are still in very good condition. Some potential options to buy there. Some very good quality players. We'll definitely keep an eye on all of them. They're all ones I've been scouting really, to be honest. So nothing new there. Um, but yeah, game against Sevilla 
coming up soon. And this is what we want to see. Look, Fernandez, Bruno Fernandez, his new contract has been agreed. We've also had, where are they? Grimaldo's new deal uh, be put in place. We've had Kenneth Wynn sign a new contract. Tarek Lamptey, Pau Torres, Jeremy Pino, all of our big players signing new deals. There was a lot of, uh, you know, in your dynamic screen where it shows things that might be causing happiness soon. A lot of players were waiting for new deals. They were on decent money, I would have thought. But I think now that we are such a big club, they're expecting a lot more money. And we've given it them in most cases to the players that I really thought deserved it. And I don't think we've been too excessive with the amounts that we're paying. But the fact that we are making money on transfers allows us to do that kind of thing with the wage budget. And I think we've developed an amazing squad. And here's an interesting thing. Unai Simon is handed in his transfer request. But they've put a the transfer request at £129 million, so I'm not interested in that value, and that doesn't mean too much to us, but we will be keeping our eye on him in case we do decide to go for him if we're not happy with Kepper in goal, but let's not judge the man yet. Let's give him a chance to see how well he might do. This video has been jam-packed so far. I'm just trying to get to this match against Sevilla, and it looks like Alejandro Francis has had his release clause activated at £40 million. Now, I was a really big fan of his. He's a Spanish under-21 international with a lot of potential, who's developed a lot since we signed him, only for £7 million. He's been great for us on all occasions and is a great player. I don't really want to lose him, but I definitely think with £40 million plus our current bank balance, we could replace him with a much better player. But considering we've developed him and turned him into the kind of player we're seeing here, I don't really want him to go. Um, but it might be taken out of our hands. We will try though. You'll see next episode if we can keep him or not. But let's pick our team for the Sevilla match. Finally, Kepa is going to go in goal. Ignacio Torres and even though Kalulu's here. And I know that Francis might be leaving. For me, he has to start in a game like this. So there we go. Francis is in the team. Lamptey at right wing back, please. Where is Grimaldo? He must be available, right? Yep, Grimaldo is available. He's going to play Fernandez and Kessie with Jeremy Pino, Amin Giori and Jared Moreno. Um, I'm not too sure about that one. You know what? I think I'm actually going to go with Giori up front, Pino in that position, and then Dan Juma as the left winger. So there we go. We're good. We're going to get underway, and hopefully we can get our second win of the season here. While Grimaldo hasn't been given a squad number, I have no idea. We're going to hit auto number. He's apparently number 26. What's happened there that Grimaldo hasn't got a number? Was he suddenly not registered because he'd been injured for so long? Who knows? But anyway, it is match time. And before we start, or as we start, I should say, let me just adjust this so it's the right speed and everything. Um, weird thing happened to me for the first time. I was out on a night out the other day um, in Weatherspoons. I know, classy. Um, and I got noticed for the first time by someone who watched the channel. He said that he's been watching since the, the, the test series, should I say, which is a long time ago. So if you are watching this video, hi, thank you for saying hello. Um, and that was just awesome. I never thought that kind of thing would happen. So yeah, uh, thank you for letting me know you'd know me and thank you guys for the support over the years um for, i say over the years over the last couple of years to get to the point where someone can actually recognize me I, that's very weird to me very hard to comprehend and um, but we are one nil up that's not hard to comprehend we are a very good team dan juma slotting through i mean Giori, who picks up where he's left off he's had a lot of interest uh in this summer Giori has he might still go there's been rumours of £60 million deals for Tottenham. Um, obviously, he's not going to go there. He's at a big club already. Um, I say already. He's at a big club right now. He doesn't want to step down to a team like Tottenham. Uh, he's got offers from Arsenal, a few others as well, but nothing that I really think, like no PSGs, Barcelonas, I think will really uh, take his eye. But we are 2-0 up now. Absolutely smashing it. Great start to the season. Our best 11 pretty much on the pitch right now. And Lamptey floats the ball into Dan Juma, who scores the goal. 2-0 up, playing well. You know what? I know he's had no influence in this game so far, but Kepa Ariza Balaga, he is the man. By the end of this season, he will be Spain's number one again. He'll be the world's best goalkeeper and it'll be the redemption arc of the decade. He's 28 now. How You couldn't imagine that. The world's most expensive goalkeeper still. 28 years old. We're still going to get something good out of him. He's still got time, but here we go. Could we go 3-0 up? I think Bruno Fernandes has been brought down. It's pretty obvious that Acuna's just chopped him down. Acuna Matata. We have got a penalty. I think it'll be Fernandez on it, to be fair. So he's won it. He'll take it. I don't think he's missed one for us yet. So you know what? Let's just say it's 3-0. Might look stupid. I might look stupid after this happens. Um, but we'll soon see. Bruno steps up, puts it away. Never in doubt, was it? 30 minutes in, three goals. I mean, if we keep this up, we'll be winning 9-0 by the end of the game. And that would be very good. Don't forget to like the video if you are enjoying. And thank you to everyone for your support on the channel up to this point. The fact that... Uh, we're getting close to 10,000 subscribers now. We're in the third season of this Villarreal series and it's still going strong. All of these things I do not take for granted. 
um, and it is really awesome to see this channel growing. If you are someone who's watching and you aren't subscribed, hit that hit that subscribe button. We want to get as close to 10,000 as we can by FN23. What amazing football that was. Please be on side. That would be a great goal to have. Great passing move. Fernandez finds an on-run in Jeremy Pino, who finishes first time. If he's on side, it is a brilliant goal. Can we be 4 up against Sevilla? It's been allowed. I think it's been allowed anyway. I can't really see behind my camera, but it looks like it's all good. Here's Grimaldo. He played it into the middle to Fernandez with a one-time touch onto Pino, who finished really well into the corner. We're 4 nil up. We're playing amazingly, although it does say 3-0, so I'm assuming it did now say disallowed. <laughs> I really thought it said allowed. My bad. I can't see behind the camera. I can just see the word allowed. And I just assumed that based on the shortness of the text, it was allowed, but clearly not. I obviously can't, uh, can't see off sides very well. Goal didn't count. We're 3-0 up, though. 40th minute, I suppose it's time for the fourth goal. And it's Bruno Fernandes who's through. Bruno Fernandes slots it away. It's getting too easy now. The football we play is incredible. Sevilla, 4 0 down, 40 minutes in. What a performance. What a start to the season. Our first game at home in the newly developed stadium. I say we're newly developed. We've bought it and we are looking to expand it. What a first half that's been. 4 0, absolutely dominating. The stadium is rocking. And that will give us a chance to bring on some of our rotation players as the game goes on, I would have thought. I kind of want to see Kepa brought into action. I want to see an amazing save from Kepa. But here we go. We've played the ball forward. Jeremy Pino finds Tariq Lamptey. Giori will be making that run into the box any second now. Here we go. Lamptey plays a cross in. Finds Amin Giori, who doesn't win it in the air. Kunde wins it, who's still at Sevilla in this save. Grimaldo to Kessie. Uh, Kessie loses it. And this might be the Sevilla highlight that we were waiting for. But no, Kessie steps in. The true box-to-box -box midfielder. And he absolutely blasts it over the bar. But you know what? Credit to him. He won the ball. He can do what he wants with it from that point. But it's a terrible performance from that defence from Sevilla. I mean, to be fair, none of them are playing well at all, or the goalkeeper. It's been a really tough day for them. And now they've put Corona at right back. God knows what they're doing. I think their manager's having a bit of a bit of a stinky day out there. But now Sevilla do get the chance to go forward. It's going to be the long shot. It's El Nasiri. He always scores against us, but never in doubt with Kepa in the net. He's never going to concede. Clean sheets all season from that man. I can guarantee it. And here he is now, showing his distribution. Look at him, playing out the back. Not known for mistakes is Kepa, so we're going to be fine. I don't think he's ever made a mistake, no? Um, oh, no. Gomez is through. But Kepa, the big man, saves it in goal. Never in doubt. One-on-ones, down to a tee. We're falling up at this point. Let's make some changes and get some players rested. We're going to bring on Despadov. We're going to bring on Alex Biena. And I'm also going to give the chance to, where is he? Kenneth win as much game time as possible, switch it to the deep line playmaker on support and see if he gets an assist or a goal in these last few minutes. But that's what we're going to do with him. Just keep sprinkling game time here and there. 20 minutes a game, every now and then an easy start. And we'll be fine. Kepa has conceded his first goal. He's just he's doing a little dance on the goal line there. I don't think he's too bothered. We're 4 nil up. Is it his fault? Should he be claiming that? I don't know. I don't think so. I think that's just a good header. If anything, Ignacio should have won the header. Although Kepa's rating has dropped like he's done something wrong. Maybe his aerial dominance and command of the box isn't as good as we thought. But the attributes are there. He's certainly got the ability. And like I say, if it goes wrong, we'll just buy you nice Simon. But I have a lot of faith in my boy Kepa. Um, I mean, we saved, what, 40 million on the Onana transfer by bringing him in? If we bought Simon, we wouldn't have had too much of it left over. I suppose we see how this Francis deal goes and then we decide what we're going to do with the money. And But here we go. We've won the ball back. Maybe not. Maybe they're going to have a long shot. Kepa's weakness. Oh, and a series through. It's gone right past him into the goal. 4-2. Again, I don't think it's Kepa's fault. Nothing is going to be Kepa's fault. But since I've bought on those subs, suddenly we're 2-0 down. 4-2 uh, down, should I say. 4-2 up. We're 4-2 up. We're not losing. But I mean, we, we've conceded two goals. You get my gist. You get what I was trying to say. And that maybe it's just a bit of a lapse of concentration from us in these later stages. And despite the fact that we are 4 0, we only did have 2 XG, but we're going to score again here because Bruno Fernandes plays it in, Pau Torres heads it over. Maybe we won't score again, but it's fine. No matter what happens now, we have won. I mean, something crazy would have to happen for us to lose. And we have won. There we are. Oh, no, come on, don't be 4 3. Jules Kunde, we slated him earlier. Oliver Torres, long shot, blocked. El Nasiri. Uh, Niz Niziri, I don't know how you pronounce it. But anyway, just blow your whistle, referee. Let's not make it 4 3. Let's not ruin Kepa's day. Oh, no. Gomez, he's in the box. He plays it across. It gets blocked. Is this just an end of game highlight? No, it is actually It is actually 4 3 now. I'm going to blame the subs that we bought on. It hasn't quite worked. And it also looks like we've only got 10 men. Um, what happened there? 
Or did I see something about Alex Biena being injured? Apparently we've taken him off. I don't even remember clicking that, but clearly I have done. It doesn't matter. We've won for free. Let's just take it as a free pointer, right? Let's not think about that second half. But there we go, guys. That is the end of the first episode of season one. You'll probably catch up to us next after the transfer window. Join the Champions League group stage at some point. We'll talk about whatever deals we've made, see how the club's doing, and hopefully everything's going well and we're on for another title and maybe that push for the Champions League. We're going to make it eventually. Third season, could it be our year? Who knows? If you did enjoy, don't forget to like the video. Feel free to get involved in the comments down below. Check out my second channel, links in the description if you want to. But most of all, have a great day, everyone. I'll see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.